Like the real deal now Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street Is that what you got? Is that you on the street? We're back to back and your ass is dead How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast and week number 31 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment hosted by our very own corporate cappy called the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker itself, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check us out and follow us and wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen. If you would like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host. The self-proclaimed greatest host, glorious host, Kyle Masters. And every week I am continued to be joined by my corporate co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss, Corporate Cappy. I'm back. He's back. Oh, thank you. I'm back. We're back. We're back. Both of us are back. After our week-long hiatus, vacation, and schooling time. We're uh, <laughs> trying to get back on the saddle here. Yeah, my God, it's. It, I was having some serious, serious withdrawals. Withdrawals from the podcast. I was as well. Just t- Twitter, cause like Twitter wasn't there for me. You know what? I, I I thought Twitter could be like a helpful hand, but you, you know, know Twitter I was, was making me miss it more with uh, all our great fans out there always mm-hmm. tweeting at us, getting me thinking about it. <laughs> but God, I was just oh, I was going through such withdrawals. But I'm back. I'm happy to be back, guys. Oh, wow. What a week we missed last week. I know. They and didn't then, get to do a Hell in a Cell review. God. My God. <coughs> Let's talk about that Hell in a Cell right off the bat. Okay. So we finally, we got what we wanted. The woman in the main event after Vince put his ego aside finally. But what we got out of that main event, don't think it would, it didn't live up to expectations. Unfortunately, it did not. And it sucks. Because you have two probably going to be one of the greatest women performers in WWE ever in the ring for this type of match. First ever Hell in a Cell women's match. And it, sh- you know, it was okay. If it, if it was a poll on WWE Twitter polls, I would just put okay. Because it, it was good, but then it wasn't good. There was shit that they looked like they should have done and they didn't do. And there was a lot of botched tables in that match. Yeah. My God. And I Even guess apparently Vince movies. was really mad about that and tried blaming it on Sasha. I'm like, how the fuck is this Sasha's fault? Just because she weighs 100 pounds doesn't mean that she can't go Yeah, sorry she's not like 300 pounds. The fucking jack guys, you like creaming your pants over Vince. Oh, that like big show just steps on the table yeah. and breaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, but, like, um, oh, it's it's just, tough. It's the first, it was a first ever. You're obviously going to have some mistakes. You're obviously going to have, you know, shit that's not going to go right. Like, it's never been done before. I know. But the, despite the bad stuff that happened in the match and regardless if you wanted it to be the main event or not, I'm really proud of these girls for what they did going out there and oh, like, oh exactly. Like I'm not taking anything away from that. Just, they should have been it looks like it should have been better. It looks like Vince had a lot to play into this. Like, oh yeah, we we can have it. The main event. Well, but if, I want this change. I want this change. I want this change. But the rumors and, were true Charlotte wanted to do a fucking moonsault from the top yeah. of the cell. And apparently it was Vince's that's how Charlotte won. It was Vince's idea. It was all Vince. Sasha was supposed to win. Well, I guess if he's like, well, if you guys wanted this a main event, we have to have something crazy happen. Like, yeah, Charlotte like, won in the title. Yeah, Charlotte. I love Charlotte. I love the flares. Oh, the, oh my God. Just, the match started off different. Like, the cell didn't even go down yet, and then they started brawling outside the yeah. ring. They, outside the cell, they went into the crowd, came back, and then, like, Charlotte... They had a good table. The table spot they had there at the announce table was yeah. a good spot. Charlotte caught Sasha on the cell, and, it, like, she, like, put her through that table, yeah. man. That was bad. That was like a Undertaker last ride back in the day yeah. sort of power bomb. But that then was they great. like did like the whole Mick Foley incorporated yeah. thing. Where she gets carried out in the stretcher. Like why do that? I bet you that was Vince's idea too. Why? Why do we need to see that? Like you don't need to repeat that. It's not going to get her over more. She's in Boston. She's already over. She had a shirt that was only available that night that said Boston on it. Oh, like 
Her entrance was awesome too, by the way. She came out in the Cadillac and yeah. she did NXT takeover. Yeah, I like the Charlotte's entrance too. She had uh, the people she carrying on her out, throne. Yeah. That was that great. Was really cool too. They continued that on Raw too. I'm like, oh, okay, this is gonna be every week now. But they had like some decent cell spots, like Sasha hit her with the double knees on the on the the cell, and yeah. Charlotte did a couple spots too. And then the one table that wasn't supposed to break broke when Charlotte <laughs> fell on it and she was just supposed to yeah. lay there and then Sasha was supposed to do some kind of like top rope spot and that one broke so they couldn't do that and then they set up the one table in the ring that Sh- Sasha was supposed to go through and Charlotte tried throwing it through her twice trying to throw it, throwing her through it twice and mm. she just rolled off twice and then natural selection for the win and I was like wow they really made Sasha lose in Boston yeah. really that was, that's incredible I can't believe I thought for sure for sure, they're gonna make her win in Boston, and then that would literally, oh man, that would be that would be incredible. And I mean, I go back to what I said before that if she was gonna win in Boston, it would have been for the title. Like she shouldn't have been champion going into it. Yeah. So I don't know. The, the, I don't understand what they're doing with the women's title. Like it, to me, it's losing prestige going back and forth every fucking month. Like I don't understand why they had her winning it and then not winning mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't understand. Yeah. But. Other than that, Helen Cell was all right, um, I guess. Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins' match exceeded my expectations of yeah, what I thought. Yeah, that was actually really good. That, looking back at it now, that probably should have been the main event, but... Yeah, it was really good. I thought it was going to open the show, too. And oh, thank nope, God. I was wrong. It, Rusev and R- Reigns <laughs> wasn't the main event. This oh, triple my God. main event crap. Dude, like, why do they even have to advertise that? Like, just... It's because wh- Vince McMahon sells a boner for Roman Reigns. You can... Take as many drugs as possible, and Roman Reigns will get pushed no matter what. Yeah, now I hear rumors about a double main event for Roadblock now. Oh, it's like great. stupid. Like, <laughs> just why do we have to have double main events? Like, just say it's the main event or it's not the main event. <laughs> Triple H needs to start running Raw and running things because Vince, you're losing your fucking mind right now, man. We'll get into SmackDown because they did the same thing this week, and that's yeah. that. We'll save that for SmackDown. But yeah, uh, Hell in a Cell. Um, that was okay. It was good. It was all right. Yeah. I, I I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I enjoyed it. I think. I hope this is the last Hell in a Cell pay per view. They just need to scrap yeah. the yeah. whole enough with the gimmick. Yeah, just have the match like once a year somewhere. Yeah, en- enough with the gimmick pay per views. Take Hell in a Cell out of there. I know you, a lot of people get hate for this, but take TLC out of there. You don't need a TLC money pay-per-view. in the bank too because they could have money in the yeah. bank at WrestleMania, like it used to be, and that's where it should be more meaningful. You make the money in the bank briefcase more meaningful at WrestleMania because then, if you really wanted to do it in the same pay per view, you can have someone win it at WrestleMania and cash in at WrestleMania, or you can have them hold on to that briefcase one whole year, <laughs> cash it in at next year's WrestleMania. Yeah, like. <laughs> I loved it when they did that. I loved when Money in the Bank was only a WrestleMania thing. It made more sense. Now they, they've turned it into the IC title ladder match. And it's like, no, stop. You can do so much more with the IC title. Enough of that. I felt like it was more prestigious when it was at WrestleMania. Yeah. And now it's its own pay-per-view. Great. So uh, to scrap the gimmick pay-per-views, have them at big-time pay-per-views. If you want to have a Hell in yeah. a Cell match, have it once They've already brought somewhere. back two former pay-per-views, and it worked out. No Mercy and Backlash. Bring back more for Raw. Give Raw Unforgiven. Give Raw Armageddon. Just you have you look at the former pay per view list and it's huge. You can bring back anything you wanted to. Bring back the one where fans get to vote. Cyber you, Sunday. Th- like there would be such a big thing on social media. Have something to have. Bring back Cyber Sunday. Do something with that. With that that interacts with the fans. Like that was good back then. I know it was a a lot of it was more predetermined than actual fan voting, but it it was exciting. I loved when Cyber Sunday and Tyler Tuesday always came around. It was interesting. Um, but yeah. That, enough with the game of pay reviews. Hell in a Cell, okay. Um, Hopefully, it's the last. You yeah, lot- the women <laughs> with the whole, you know, the poster. The, they're on the front poster of yeah. Hell in a Cell, so good for them. And last week we missed the lowdown show, so we can get to talk about Raw and SmackDown last week. To be honest, I'm trying to vividly remember what happened last week, but this week was such an up and down roller coaster. I don't even remember what happened last week. <laughs> we had uh, your boys, the Headbangers, return. Oh yeah. That fucking team. They're fucking hot topic assholes. Man. I watched that. They didn't even get an entrance. They had their entrance jobbed, and they lost in, like, a minute. Of, of course. They, why bring them back? Why? <laughs> why is Brizongo being kept off TV, and they bring the fucking headbangers back? <laughs> why are they automatically put in this tournament? Unfucking believable Like, that j- it's like I, the spirit squad. Thank God they're gone. It just gone. dumbs down SmackDown 100% when they when teams like the Headbangers and Spirit Squad show up over a team that wellly deserves to be put on TV in Brazongo. 
But no, they have these stupid backstage segments that are just just stupid. It's like Golden Truth for SmackDown. Like it's just terrible. <laughs> oh. And last week on Raw, we had the whole uh, Goldberg thing, where uh, Goldberg came out and, and had a one on one with Paul Heyman, and for some Paul fucking ru- reason, Rusev got put into that. I'm like, what? If, what? I guess they wanted to have Goldberg ha- like take out some big guy. Yeah, and gives uh, an awkwardly that was an awkward jackhammer. You can see the ring rust in Goldberg. He tweets about it after, um, and but he speared the shit out of Paul Heyman. <laughs> God, it was like it looked like he was like it was like running into a mattress. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just, like it was a good spear, but you can see the give that Paul Heyman's fat body gave to Goldberg. Like he just bounced back, and then it, to make matters worse, it was right at the rope, so there was even more give. <laughs> that and he had to like jump over Rusev. Yeah, so just imagine body. Goldberg trying to spear a giant king size mattress. That's what it looked like. <laughs> oh, I never God. thought of it like that. It was funny. I rewatched a couple of times. I laughed. But, uh, <sighs> yeah, interesting week last week. Not really. Not really. No. I, I'm, I'm sure I tweeted about it. I don't really remember right now, just because this week's been... We're trying a lot to of... focus on this week, guys. Trying to give the, the, a good show for you yeah. this week. And this week, God, it was oh, so yeah. up and down. Carmelo and Alexa winning. Oh, yeah. Never got to talk about that. I tweeted about it, but... Mm-hmm. Our girls teaming yeah, up with each other got a, and a winning. Du- double win there. And... Had a really, really good heel promo afterwards. Mm-hmm. Really, really, really good. Um, obviously, Alexa Bliss, really good heel right now. Her her work on the mic as a heel is just phenomenal. Carmella, even, even I mean, I'm not going to say even greater, but just as good because she's a savage on the mic. Oh, yeah. She's more of a savage than Alexa just tells it how it is. Uh, Carmella's just ripping apart Nikki. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I, oh yeah, anyone that's ripping apart Nikki, you're you're number one on my list. And it just happens to be Bay Mella too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a good. That was about it. Yeah, that was about it. Pretty much. <laughs> and this week, well, fuck. At, at least this week was the dumpster fire like two weeks ago. It was just up and down. It's like it literally is like a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. It's just up or you Americans, Darien Lake. It's just fucking up and down, up and down, man. Just this week it was good and then it was bad. It was good and it was bad. It's just. Uh, I couldn't couldn't figure out if it was like my ratings. It took me forever. I was a day late in my ratings. If you guys seen on my Kyle Masters account, there each tweet was a day late because I couldn't figure out what the fuck to rate the show. <laughs> my ratings went up and down. Raw was just yeah. promo central. So let's get let's get into raw review. Let's do it right now. Let's jump into it. My notes for this week: taped WWE sucks. Like this tape nonsense. I know they go overseas and it's tough because of the time change. It just sucks. They take so much away from a taped show. Cause now in Raw's tape, that's even the worst part. It's not live. Uh, they they fix the crowd noise, like they adjust the levels. Fucking Kevin Dunn back there. Just <laughs> you get the levels, man. Can't have the cheers that loud, no. Stupid. The, u- the useless you- editing they put in it to it. It's just ugh. Why would you not want a crowd to cheer? Why wouldn't you want the people at home? Watching on TV to see a crowd getting excited and chanting and cheering. I don't. Know, I think they're. I think it's just WWE's scared shitless that the crowd's gonna hijack a show. But <laughs> you're, you you don't ever go to Scotland ever. This is like the first time it's been in Scotland in who knows how long. And give them a chance. They're fucking loud because they're passionate about the WWE. They don't, they don't get to see them often. No, the in the states here do. And they're ty- They have to wake up at certain times to watch Raw and SmackDown as well. So like, give them a break. <laughs> Let them chant what they want. Like, I don't understand why that's a big, why that's a bad thing that they're, that they're being, they're expressing they're their being shunned. It's retarded. I don't understand it. Kevin Dunn, Kevin Hayes, or my, P.S. Michael Hayes, all you have goofballs back there. Just figure your shit out, man. You guys can't stop living in the past. They're, <laughs> that's the problem you, with these guys. They're living in the past. And then they're they're back to that old school type of wrestling where all oh, these guys should get cheered and these guys should get booed. Crowd should have no say in it. No, none. What you can do, wanna... do that with 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 wrestling back then because it was never live. <laughs> you can fix it all you want. Do you want them to be like Memphis and just sit there and not do anything? For yeah, the whole be time? casual ass fans. No, you just cheer Roman Reigns whenever Roman Reigns comes out. No one else gets cheered but Roman Reigns. <laughs> okay, hate casual crowds <laughs> with a passion. Uh. Uh, anyways. Also, there would be, uh, or this week, it felt like they weren't hyping Survivor Series the right way. They're hyping it, but they weren't doing it the right way. They were 
there was more of an inner conflict between the teams than the other teams trying to focus and try to play maybe like mind games with the other teams. This is what I think. They should have been more cross brand attacks or cross brand antics that like, you know, just made fun of the other team and just poke at them. Like maybe, I don't know, heaven forbid Randy Orton appears on Raw and RKO is Roman Reigns. Do you know how much like I've heard people like other people have said that if Randy Orton had have gone onto Raw and RKO'd Roman Reigns, like out of nowhere and then ran out back into the crowd, he would have gotten the biggest pop of all time. <laughs> Cause that crowd fucking hated Roman Reigns this week. When he came out there was, I didn't hear one single... Usually when they're in the American crowds, you know, they're gonna, still going to boo Reigns, but there's still like a quarter of people Yay! cheering. Not one person was cheering Roman Reigns this week. It was so heavily booed. And I'm like, I, I'm so surprised they, they didn't they, edit it. And they probably edited some of it down. Probably. It was probably louder than that. <laughs> but like, if if Randy Orton had showed up and RKO'd him, you know how over Randy Orton would be right now? <laughs> And just ran back into the crowd, and like and the crowd's like cheering on. He's doing this Randy Orton pose, and he's got like a SmackDown shirt. Why didn't he do that? Why did they have to show? How does it make sense? That there's inner conflict. Why they should be they should be battling with the other team, They're not each other. They should be doing the whole invasion thing. Survivor Series is about show. the brands facing the other brands, not themselves facing themselves. Doesn't make any sense. It's literally what they're going for right now is the team dissension. That's it. In everything, in every single the tag teams, the women. the men and the women. Unreal. So we'll get into Raw. Should you guys are oh, I'm already into Raw. Should we do the tweets first? Oh yeah, the tweets. The tweets. I forgot about you guys out there. My bad. See, you know, we're a little bit rusty. You know, we're yeah. not off the week. <laughs> uh, you gotta give us a break. You see what a week hiatus does to us? Yep. <laughs> uh, we're rusty as hell. So We'll get into your tweets. We'll start off with uh, Monday Night Raw. Okay, if I can get them out here. See how rusty I am? I don't even have to. I have them right here. Anyways, so we'll get into them. We'll start off with at Salvis94, Casey Salvis on Twitter. He puts, decent show. The crowd made Raw go by fast. Overall, 7 out of 10. Oof. That is a pretty high rating high there. Score. High score. <laughs> high score. Uh, next tweet comes from Tony Mercer. At Recram, why not on Twitter? He puts solid show, but weirdly placed throughout. I'd give it a six out of ten. Survivor Series is looking very interesting. I agree, it is looking very interesting in some aspects. Uh, next set of tweets comes from our boy Gamma at Gamma NU One on Twitter. Uh, he puts, "I thought it was a decent show, except for the Shining Stars versus <laughs> Gold Goldilocks." <laughs> okay, six point five out of ten. Main event brought it up to a seven. Okay. I love Golden Truth and Shining Stars. Of course you do. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Next set of tweets come from Gillies. At 929X Gillies. I hope I'm saying that right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Glorious Craig. As his name is now on Twitter. Uh, he puts, Main event of Raw was great, I think. And Dana Brooke needs to go back to development. And considering the way this main event looks, I'll give Raw a 5.5 out of 10. Um, didn't like the Shining Stars and Golden Truth match. Wow. Everyone's hating on the Golden <laughs> Truth Shining Stars, man. Uh, Dana Brooke can come develop in my place anytime. Just next set of Raw tweets. Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. The crowd made the show. Best thing about... Was the Bailey chance? I agree. Yeah. Raw was a five. Most of it was long overdue promos. The wrestling was short, and the show was heavily edited. Sad the Bailey chance made the segment better. And to be honest, why is Sasha back already after that match? And I don't understand. I know Sammy versus Dolph will give us a match of the year candidate. The only thing I'm looking forward to as Survivor Series is that match and the five on five men match, and that's it. I quickly lost interest in Brock versus Goldberg. Well, because they weren't even there this week. Oh, we got them. We got the useless week. promos, and I'll get into that when we talk about that. Um, and our last set of tweets, of course, come from the guy or the man. You, you love so good to me. That's right, and that man is Michael Chow at Real Michael Chow on Twitter with that interesting theme song. <laughs> Uh, I love the song we gave to him. I love it. 
He puts Raw was okay, 5 out of 10. Disliked the crowd. It was like being at a movie theater and that one guy who talks during the movie. <laughs> Pros, Rich Swan boogies to another win. The club hashtag beat up Raw tag teams. Jobber free Mondays and great Lesnar and Goldberg vintages. I agree about the jobber free Mondays. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> that should be a hashtag. Hashtag jobber free Monday. <laughs> I don't know about the crowd compare it to a movie though because I think the crowd made Raw better. Raw was a snooze fest yeah, with I all know. the promos and stuff. I think the crowd made it a little bit more watchable. Like I understand that you know when they were trying to talk, maybe the crowd was kind of yeah you know interrupting yeah. Bailey from talking a few times. But other than that, I didn't really have a problem yeah. with the crowd. He puts cons for Raw: the rise and fall of Rusev, <laughs> pinning best friends, and Owens make the list. And New Day's promo goes from great to bad snooze. <laughs> wow, corporate mm. Michael Chow this week. I like it. It was, lo- it's, it was so long, that segment. So long. So we're going to do the SmackDown tweets. SmackDown, SD Live, Blue Brand. Blue Brand, baby. First set of tweets comes from Casey Salas at Salas94. Too much James Ellsworth. <laughs> he should not be on SmackDown every week. Six out of ten. I agree. <laughs> I 100% agree with him. <laughs> Next set of SmackDown tweets, that Craig guy, he puts Raw was much better show this week. He put Okay, that was his Raw rating, 8 out of 10. He gave SmackDown a 5 out of 10, nothing big this week. Mr. No Chin is getting a bit boring now. <laughs> Don't mind Shane, he is a wrestler who is not afraid to take a big bump for the show. Would have picked The Undertaker, though. Oh, interesting, interesting. I don't think he's exclusive to SmackDown, though. That's Yeah, thing. I don't know what that is either. Uh, Gamma at Gamma NU1 puts felt very bland and boring, only 4 out of 10. Wow. Corporate rating there. You should like that. I don't like it. Tony Mercer at Recram Why Not puts solid episode. I love the addition of Shane McMahon to the team, even though I was all in for Corbin. I'd give it an- I'd get another 6 out of 10. Hmm. Interesting. Next set of tweets. Glorious Greg at Gillies. I'm glad Brazongo is on the Survivor Series team and not the Spirit Squad. And I also like the idea of the Cruiserweights solid episode. I love the addition of Shane. Oh, wait, that was uh, Tony Mercer. My bad. It's me, all rusty. I am bringing other people's tweets. Uh, he says, I like the idea of Cruiserweights coming to SmackDown, but other than that, I give SmackDown a corporate rating of three out of ten. Wow. And I gave SmackDown a th- but He puts, I gave SmackDown a three because of Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Who said that? Gillies. <laughs> Glorious my new Greg. Favorite, new favorite fan out there. <laughs> Next set of tweets, Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. I give it a five. The main event wasn't the main event. SmackDown making the show about the authority figures. That's why that was last. Uh, James is over. James is overstaying his welcome. Is overstaying his welcome now. Uh, James Ellsworth and Baron Corbin being out of Sur- Survivor Series and putting Shane in is the dumbest idea. Why? Why are they doing this? I guess he's trying to say. Well, still looking. F- four to uh, survivor series well not that much now seeing the card for takeover i just might skip a few matches on survivor series smackdown was better because it didn't have a long overdue promos alex and becky carried the show oh and then seeing brazongo as well and i also get smacked on the win because of a lot of newsworthy things happen i'm excited for what the future holds all right interesting tweets forlorn as always last but not least michael chow he put skipped SmackDown Live, so no pros and cons, but here's some here here's some other stuff. At no holds barred. Celebration time, come on. My sources have told me Eva Marie is booked for another movie and will be out an additional month. Woo! Yes! <laughs> yes! If Unbelievable. If we celebrate good times, mm-hmm. the would play right now. He's got questions for us, though. Thoughts on Baron Corbin being replaced. Who would you have had as a picked as a replacement i would have picked miz or apollo cruz i would have picked Apollo cruz 100 percent. because there's no one else even on the roster that's besides those two guys this would piss me pick? off what i thought smackdown is the land of opportunity we say this time and time again where it's supposed to be all about the superstars yet they just replace a superstar for a, a non-injury he's not actually injured it was an angle but I heard Corbin is, gonna, Corbin is going to get a push soon. I hope so. He might be facing Johnson. So then he should have been replaced with Apollo Crews. I mean, I'm I'm just being biased here because I am excited to see Shane McMahon. But the, I mean, I, 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 I'm excited too. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm finally going to see Shane wrestle. Like, I've never seen him wrestle ever. But come on. Really? 
And, and, and another, I'm on both sides of the fence. Yes, I'm going to love it. No, I'm not liking it because they're not giving the opportunity to Baron Corbin. It's stupid, and they're not putting Apollo Crews instead. And Apollo Crews is being used to lose to Kurt Hawkins right now. Stupid. Like, why? Um, this guy's... Why is Apollo Crews being dumbed down right now? It's so bad. It's like they have nothing for uh, him right now. At least Corbin isn't losing these matches to Kurt Hawkins. And be happy about that. He's, you know, he's getting disqualified. Yeah, in the I don't know. Police, though. Next question. If you could pick someone else to have broken the streak, who would it be? I'd pick Del Rio in his prime. Oh, what yeah. A push. Michael Chow. Well, I'm going uh, That's so hard. I'm John Cena. No, that's right off the bat, right at the top of my head. It's gonna, you know, it's, it would have been John Cena. I did not if want anybody Lesnar to do it. Yeah. I would have picked John Cena too. To be and honest. that should have been Undertaker's last match. It would have been Undertaker's very, very last match. It'd be devastating, whatever. But John Cena would be the guy, and I guarantee you, Undertaker would raise his hand or shake his hand after. It would be one of those moments. I, I would. I guess I would have to go with Cena too, as much as I love the Del Rio pick. There. <laughs> the Del Rio, what a push that would be! Can you imagine that? God. Oh, he's supposed to be a Paul Heyman guy. I think <laughs> Zeb Coulter guy. Ugh. Anyways, now we got the tweets out of the way. We are what twenty six minutes into the show. It's gonna be a longer show today. Yeah, let's go with the raw review. Let's so right off the, the bat. Oh, see, look at this. You guys are hearing this. This is good. This is why we are an awesome podcast. We do this shit live. We could be corporate and just edit this shit out. But no, I forgot another segment of the show because I'm so rusty right now. And that is the one that's hosted by our very own corporate co-host, Corporate Cappy, the Luke Gallows Polls. That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy. It is where we read off. Some great polls from our boys at FunWV Polls. They do some great polls, some funny polls. All polls for your liking. So go check them out on Twitter and interact with the polls. So, so what was your excitement level for Hell in a Cell? Very excited, average excited, or I didn't care about Hell in a Cell? I'd say average excited for me. 40% agreed with you. But I think a lot of that is from people voting after the fact. Before, I was actually really excited, but... Watching during the show and after, I'm like, average. Pretty much average. Uh, you're going to like this one. What was your opi- What's your opinion of Cedric Alexander's in-ring ability? Great, above average, average, or terrible? Should be great. Is, it, wait, is above average above great? That's No, okay, no, great. great. It should be great. 51% said great. Yes. 5% said terrible. Who are your five? Who? who <laughs> what? Yo- Those 5% probably think the shining stars are the greatest tag team ever made well i like the shining stop stars. don't even jump to that <laughs> but i i cedric out you cannot compare them to cedric no, alexander's not. in-ring ability I don't, for those five percent man i don't even i you're a lost cause i don't know what to say yeah, there just you know what go join tna whatever stupid company they just took them over for some reason just go join them just go go watch oh my god i'm not <laughs> Some of these polls are from last week. I'm trying to like get them out of the way here, <laughs> and, like the matches that we missed. But uh-huh. I just want to read this one because it's funny. What was your opinion of the Bailey versus Dana Brooke match? Great, above average, average, or terrible? Terrible. Average. Forty five percent said average. No, Dana Botch ruined that. We'll get into Dana what she botch. did. We'll get into what she, she did in her botch like, of the week this week. Oh my god, she I got took. The bit. Oh. I saw the botch this week, Dana. I saw it. I saw it. Can't get away from it. <laughs> uh, what was your opinion of Goldberg's Raw appearance last week? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up, 73%. Yes, it was good. Spearing the fuck out of the mattress. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting poll. Which one of these superstars would be a better fit if they were on the Raw roster? Hmm. Nikki Bella, Carmella, Becky, or Alexa Bliss? I'm going to say Nikki Bella. Yeah. Because yeah, she just belongs on Monday Night Raw. Oh, it's tough because it needs to be more women. Uh, I'd say Nikki Bella. Yeah, yeah, Nikki Bella won this poll even before I looked at it. Thirty-four mm. percent. Mm. Just makes sense to have Nikki Bella. She's a more of a raw type. She is. Just look at her. She's raw. It's written all over her. Her boobs aren't raw. Let's get oh. that straight. <laughs> Those aren't PG. <laughs> it's not a PG show. Um, 
Which one of these McMahon family members would you want in charge of WWE right now? Vince, Steph, Shane, or Triple H? Triple H. 100% Triple H. Look what he's done with NXT. Triple H. Shane, 41%. What? Triple H, 40 Okay. All right. Um, Shane, oh, I think people are just basing it off of what we've Shane seen with Shane doesn't really before make SmackDown. any decisions. He's just the GM. Triple he's H not... made every decision in NXT. It's his show. And look, it's been the greatest show that WWE's ever made. Like, yeah, Shane is the one, like, the the person you see on TV that's making the decision. But realistically, he's not making No, it's Vince. Decisions. It's Vince. <laughs> Vince is running Raw and SmackDown right now. Triple H is running NXT. Do you vote? People would, I guarantee you, it'd be close. I know they're still going to be the goons that vote Raw and SmackDown. NXT would be right up there. I would vote NXT. It's definitely the greater show. 100%. Um, <laughs> poor Steph finished last behind Vince. <laughs> I don't think she has no. I I I think Steph's judgment is just Steph. like her, her dad's. And according to the Twitter polls this week, which show won this week, Raw or SmackDown? Hmm. This week or yep. last week? Well, this week. So this week. And uh, I don't want to give up my ratings. What would the what would the poll say? SmackDown seventy one percent. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Wow. Um, uh. And we got a couple of our own polls, if I can pull them up. Oh, yeah. We, I ran a poll yeah. during the election. <laughs> I can't, I totally forgot about that. I want to know uh, how on. that I'm poll gonna, finished. I got to pull it up right now. <laughs> okay, so if you guys didn't know, for shits and gigs, I ran a poll before SmackDown. I'm like, what do you, I, I think I put, what, what are you guys watching tonight? The election or SmackDown Live? So I, gave, I put up a poll. I put SmackDown Live, the election. Then I added a, f- just for yeah, fun one, go. the Found Food it. Network special. So here we go. What, what so are you watching total, total votes. Well, how many votes did this thing get? Smacked, uh, 84 votes. Yeah. SmackDown, the election, or the Food Network special? SmackDown, 44%. What? SmackDown beat the election. <laughs> 40% for the election and 10% for the Food Network. Oh, yeah, that Food Network was, was, special was good. I heard uh, Game Man Yu in, uh, informed us. He said it was uh, a special on potatoes. So I, I'm glad. Special <laughs> on potatoes. Yeah. And the... Uh, yeah, the other poll. I'm trying to get it, but... Uh, Twitter. My Twitter is being corporate right now. Hang on. Them there corporate corporate on. Twitter guys. Got Gotta it. fix their shit. Yeah, you I make the list. Up. You'll make the list. Yeah, the list of NHBWP. We had a total. We had a whopping six votes for this one. Wow! And uh, we either had, if you guys went and watched the WrestleMania special that was what we posted last week, since we weren't going to be there last week. Whose show was better? Mine, Kyle Masters, or both were equally good. Both were equally good. One. Yay! Good. I thought we both had. We had both decent cards. I really. I thought our cards were. And we didn't have any crossover matches, which was which was interesting. Yeah. Was that interesting, kinda, yeah. So yeah, we had like match. 13 matches each. I don't know what more you want from us, guys. Yeah. I think we deserve a little bit more than six votes there. Yeah. Come on. All right. So I think I'm now in the show where I can do the Raw review. I think. I think. I think. <laughs> uh, no, we did Luke Gallows polls. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, now we're good. Now we're okay, Raw review, finally. <laughs> 33 minutes in. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Raw. Uh, basically, we got the... All the teams figured out now. Um, fifth member of the Raw team. Let's start off with that. Wow, what a shocker. Because <laughs> we didn't see this fucking coming. <laughs> Seth Rollins is the fifth member. Whoa! I had no idea it was going to be Seth Rollins. Oh, I thought it was going to be Bo Dallas. Oh, man. Jeez. Just blew me away with that announcement. I was so shocked. Anyways, Kevin Owens and Jericho out there acting like they're the team captains. <laughs> I love the one point where, like, they address themselves, or Chris Jericho addressed themselves as the, the Universal Champion. Like, they're both the Universal Champion. Or whenever they talk, Jericho's like, it's Team Chris and Kevin. And then yeah. when Kevin talks, it's cr- Team Kevin and, and Chris. Chris. <laughs> uh, again, it's showing the little deception here and there until uh, they, they finally break up, which will probably be after Survivor Series. And we had Roman Reigns getting booed coming out, and we had... Uh, God. Oh, Braun Strowman out there too. And Steph's out there. She got heat beyond galore. Oh, God, <laughs> uh, Steph tells everyone that they better fight 
Like their jobs are on the line. You're like, you're going to fire all of them, Steph. <laughs> Come on. Give me a fucking break. You fired all of them. You're going to fire Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Chris Jericho, and Kevin Owens. Who's going to be your main event? You're going to have the shittiest show on the face. You might, you might as well just bow down at TNA because TNA will beat you guys. If you fired all... Like, what's... Well, you guys better fight your job on the line. No, nah, it's not happening. Then you're not firing anybody, Steph. Like, ooh. Ooh, the king of <laughs> yeah. kings. Ooh. So they end up starting to brawl with each other. I'm like, oh, what the hell is this? Yeah, obviously they can't get along. You got Braun Strowman doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. You get the two faces in Rollins and Reigns. Like, who, who, who would have thought I would have said that? Or the faces of Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. <laughs> But in reality, they boo Roman Reigns. <laughs> they barely cheer Seth Rollins now. They cheer more for Kevin Owens and Jericho, who are the clear cut, full face or full heels. <laughs> I feel like the crowd nowadays cheers for the heels. Yeah, it, it's become bizarre world everywhere now. Well, I mean, the the work that Chris Jericho is doing now is like the best work of his entire career. Like <laughs> the crowd loves the list he, of Jericho. They promo, wait for him. Heel promos are usually better. Yeah. I think they love to boo too. They'll like make fun of the city they're in, and the crowd will boo. But I think they're doing it like boo, like they 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 love to boo. So I don't know. Chris Jericho, yeah. with the whole list thing crap going on still. Yeah. They started to brawl. Steph books a fatal, fatal five way match. Didn't we have this like a month ago? But why? They're supposed to be a. T- you you want your team to get together and and focus, Steph. So you. F- Make them face each other in a fucking match? If anything, she should have made, like, a tag team match with those guys versus another team. Yeah, like Cesaro and... Sheamus. Sheamus versus Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Uh, Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman versus The New Day. Like you, you, You're you, trying you, to grow inclusion between the members, not <laughs> try to make them fight each other. I don't understand. That match was brutal. Like, we'll get into the match now. That match was... There was a lot of weapons in that match. Kendo um, sticks, tables, fucking shit everywhere, man. <laughs> Finally got to see Braun Strowman get his ass handled, though. First time ever we've seen that, besides him squashing well, people. Well, because all four of them ganged up yeah. on him. But then he, like, he fell out of the ring. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I'm like, Jesus. Oh. And he got put on the table, and yeah. then uh, <laughs> he got put through the table with someone else. Who else got put? I think it was Jericho. Yeah. Oh, my God. This Rollins, match, like, like, this match was him. brutal. <laughs> it ends, though, in like the funniest fashion ever. Like I'm like, oh, this is actually too perfect. They had Roman Reigns, Superman punch KO, and for some reason roll all the way to fuck out of the ring. Yeah, Roman Reigns. Why like, did he go all the way out of the ring? He's never done that before. And he didn't even get back in the ring to stop the pin. And then Jericho or uh, Owens follows on Jericho, who's already down, and his <laughs> ref pins it. And Jer- <laughs> Kevin Owens wins by pinning Chris Jericho <laughs> by accident. By accident. <laughs> so again, it looks like it's setting a little bit more deception for the future, just a little bit. And then they like, they stand up and Jericho's like, "What happened?" And Kane was like, "Oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We're we're still best friends." <laughs> I uh, thought that was a good ending, but it made no sense that Roman Reigns just completely rolled out of the ring, just f- f- oversold the whole Superman punch, and then like didn't come back in to try and break up the pin. That was a greater sell than his cousin, The Rock. Selling the Stone Cold Stunner at WrestleMania 17, where he did like four backflips, bounced off the rope, and fell back down. <laughs> <laughs> you, your Superman punch and went out. You could have been like, he almost rolled backstage. <laughs> God. Uh, anyways, move on. We had a Cruiserweight match, but we now know. And we'll get into that in the news part. The Cruiserweights won't be on Raw for long. Uh, we got Rich Juan and Sin Cara, oh, great botch Cara, versus Brian Kendrick and the raw debut of Noam Dar. He's from Scotland, and he got a huge reaction, but apparently it was a lot bigger, but, you know, yeah. WWE Kevin Dunn. Not like, good to it down, man, it's too loud, can't hear anything. So yeah. dumb. So he got a big pop. And he's impressive. I remember watching him in the Cruiserweight Classic, um, the whole thing with the crowd, uh, Dar Wars. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's... it's, it's it's impressive. <laughs> um, yeah, his hometown. Uh, it's weird that he teamed with Brian Kendrick because he's not a heel. But there, after the match, it made sense because Kendrick yeah. like turned on him after the match. Yeah, uh, it was a really good match though. Swan impressive as always too. Botchkara fuck didn't really do anything to impress me. Um, they just need more time. They're not getting yeah. enough time on Raw to actually do these full out cruiserweight matches. Yeah, uh, Swan pins Kendrick again. So he's got two victories over the Cruiserweight champion, so I think that deserves a title shot. This? Can you handle this? 
Uh, yeah, after, as you said, after the match, Kendra tries to attack Noam Dar, fails. Noam Dar ends up kicking his ass, and he gets the upper hand, and that's how they end the segment. Again, like you just said, no time. There's no, no time. time. They they're not appreciated on Raw like they should be. Exactly. They don't like. They're literally just there to spot fill. They're not there yeah. as an extra add on to the show. Yeah. It's almost like they need their own show. Hint, hint to our WWE headline segment. <laughs> so move on. Oh. God, this is why Raw kind of sucked this week. This is this is the part of the roller coaster where it went fucking. It started high and then just went straight down. We have the literally probably the longest in ring segment I've ever seen. <laughs> like this can this in ring segment needed a commercial. Like it was that long. I think the, I think this segment lasted more than the actual wrestling did in the show. I think it was like a half hour long. This segment. Like we had all the Raw survivors, uh, the Raw Survivor Series tag teams in the ring. We had Enzo and Cass, The Club, New Day, Seamus Cesaro, and Golden mm-hmm. Truth, who actually get replaced later on in the show by the Shining Stars because they decide to trade their spot for, you know... Timeshare. Timeshare and, and whatever. Some garbage. Um, <laughs> the raw, so they're, they're all assembled in the ring. And literally, it's like the most... This is the longest segment I've ever seen. Like, they just... They're talking back and forth. I'm like, Mike, hey, get on with it. Get on with it. Start brawling. Do something. No, because all the teams had to talk, and every member from each team had to talk. Oh, man. If, I was eventually almost falling asleep, and then we get saved day. by the New Day. <laughs> they didn't open this segment. It was all the other teams, and the yeah. New Day finally comes in. <laughs> and they come out dressed as, like, the Braveheart gear with the kilts, and we got Xavier Woods with uh, Francesca's cousin, or Scottish cousin, uh, Agnes. The bagpipes. Who he doesn't even know how to play him, yeah. right? And the crowd starts chanting Agnes. Yeah, he's, he said he spent like all day with it, and he couldn't figure out how to play it, and he's got a new uh, respect for the Scottish people. <laughs> God. So they're in the ring, and they pull uh, pull some promos, and mainly on the club, who again, they're feuding with right now, um, while the other tag teams were just kind of standing there in the background. Including Enzo and Cass. Enzo was getting huge over by the crowd. <laughs> they were chanting the whole yeah. Enzo. <laughs> it's such a good, it's such a good chant. I love it. So this leads to a match. We had the New Day versus the Club. Again, great. While well, you couldn't incorporate any other team in there, you're gonna have a two-on-two tag team match. I don't know. Like, what the hell? Why is it just the New Day and the Club? We've already seen that in the last couple of weeks. And again, there are two teams on the same team that are fighting. Yeah. Again, we get more. Why? Why? This doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, in the in the segment, like everyone was just making fun of Sheamus during this segment. Yeah, <laughs> shame, shame. They're like Enzo and Cass were getting into it. Golden yeah. Truth was into it. Like they were just all like chanting, like shame, uh, shame, I, shame. He's probably gonna walk out on the on that match. Cesaro's probably gonna go for a tag. And he's just gonna walk out. I think he's gonna screw them over. I think SmackDown's tag team's gonna win that. We'll get into our predictions yeah. later. <laughs> but uh, match was really quick because the segment I think was like you know hours long. The match was like two minutes long. And the club won! The club the club pinned the New Day. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm happy that the club is finally, you know, getting some wins here. <laughs> All that for that. You have them beat the the captains of the, the tag team, team champion. What? <laughs> Why would you have your captains look strong going into the match? You have them lose to the club. I have them lose any other week but before Survivor Series. God. Oh man! Th- again, I think someone else, some point in the Twitter's, the booking was just all over the place. Because we're, now we're getting sense. to the point of the brand split where we're starting to see repeat shit all yep. the time now. Yeah. Because we already saw New Day versus the Club. Now we've already seen New uh, the Club versus Enzo and Cass, and now it's just like, who are they going to face now? Yeah. Golden Truth. Yeah. Stuff. They're going to start. NXT is going to have to start firing people more and more up, man. <laughs> like it's it's literally going to be like the the calls for NXT will be like twice a year. Like, you're going to have to... They have so many people at Development Center. Fucking start putting them NXT, man. Like, you, you're you going to need to make room. This It's getting too bland now. Now that Raw and SmackDown surely to become three hours, it's going to be crazy. So we'll move on from, you know, the part of the show that took up half the show. Um, <laughs> Segment that took Another up. shocking fifth member announcement. Ooh, fuck. Big shocker here. Uh, we get the Raw women's team in the ring with Michael Cole. Charlotte uh, basically calling Bailey the weak link. And sucking up to Nia Jax because Nia Jax is a beast and doesn't want to get crushed by Nia Jax. I understand that. Um, 
So Charlotte annou- announces the fifth member or after Bailey comes out. Yeah, so Bailey comes out first, and she gets a like. The, this is what we're talking about with the crowd. They were just hitting, "Hey, Bailey, ooh, ha, yeah. I want to know if you'll be my girl." And they just kept saying it over, like, over and, and over. over. And Bailey was trying to talk. She's like, "Yes, Glasgow, I'll be your girl." But I'm really excited. And then they just kept like talking yeah. over. Her. It was great. And Charlotte, Charlotte was great during this too. She was like yeah, covering her, her ears. ears. <laughs> The quiet peasants. I guess she's really taking this whole queen gimmick to it. heart. I love it. You know what? I love Charlotte I, now. Okay, I, I I love that her get. She's actually playing a gimmick now and not you know Flair's daughter and trying to be this this legacy person. She's actually her own character and that's this queen character. Like she's everyone's such, her peasants and you know you have to bow down to the queen. She's such a good heel though. I love it. And actually, before we had the fifth member, we had the fourth member announced. Woohoo! Yeah, it was <laughs> Alicia. Foxy. Fo- Alicia Fox. She's what? alive. Uh, okay, so once to live. I'm glad we have Nia Jackson here, but I guess so we can't really have. We don't have anyone else. The, the, I guess Emma, but she hasn't debuted yet. Is there anybody else we're missing? Summer Ray, but she's uh, currently injured. Yeah. And Paige. Yeah, well, we know the thing with Paige. <laughs> but um, Alicia Fox cuts probably the worst promo I've ever oh heard God, in my life. That was. T- I don't know what was. Th- oh man! Michael Cole like gave her the mic for like two seconds. She's like. We're a Survivor Series team, but at the end, we're going to be Survivor. It was like the worst promo I've ever heard. (laughs) And then Cole's Uh, just kind of like, okay. anyway. (laughs) And then Charlotte announces it, and out comes Dana Bosch. I'm like, oh, for Christ's sake. I'm like, I already knew from there. I'm like, this is not her. It's not Dana Brooke. It's not. I was gun shy, though. Yeah. But we all knew it was going to be Sasha Banks. We knew it. Come on. You cannot. If it wasn't, I was not going to go to Survivor Series. Yeah. But no one could even, like, as we was going to the Bailey thing, no one could get, like, five words in. The, be- <laughs> was the so best like- was Sasha was trying to talk, and then she finally just went along with it and was like, yeah. Bailey, she's like, went yeah. on to Bailey, she's like, I want to know if you'll be my girl, and it was great. <laughs> I love those two. Uh, so this leads to a, again, hey, let's put them against each other. Makes sense. This leads to Bailey, Alicia Fox, and Sasha versus Charlotte, Dana Brooke, and Nia Jax. Let's create more conflict. So Dana's not even on the team, but she's somehow still in. Yeah, what is she the mascot it, for Team Raw? I guess. Mm, <laughs> and, oh god, pretty hot mascot. <laughs> uh. Bailey ends up winning and pins Charlotte. Another thing. What? Like, another the team captain loses again. <laughs> what? And honestly, I love Bailey, but she's got to get a new finisher. Man, the Bailey to belly is not. Yeah, you know a what good she needs? Finisher. A title shot. This is not fair. She's pinned Charlotte like three times already. Why didn't she get a title shot? One on one with Charlotte. One Sasha on one. deserved it first. Yeah, well, now it's Bailey's turn. Yeah, Bailey's turn, eh? Yep. So, yeah, the team captain losing again. You know, that makes more sense. So, again, the booking's just all over the fucking place, man. Just doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Again, like I said before, roller coaster of I mean, a fucking the show. The crowd loved that Bailey won. Yeah. But. So, the one part of this match, though, is the Dana Botch of the week. And this is what happened. If you guys didn't see it, go back and look. I saw it. I caught it. And I'm like, my God, this could have ended badly. So, Dana, there's one part of the match where Dana Brooke gets thrown out, I think by Alicia Fox, out of the ring. Horrible sell job by Dana Brooke, by the way. She, she, it's like she felt awkward going through the ropes. It's like she didn't even fall first and had to throw herself in. Yeah. But as she's doing it, do you know, does she not see that Bailey's right there? Like, you have to, like, your peripherals ring have to awareness. be on. Her ring awareness in the game is, like, zero. Is zero. She, Bailey's head was right there. Her knee just grazed her fucking eye. And, like, it, it her. I saw Bailey grab her eye a little bit because it actually kind of touched her. But Q, it, the, the amount of speed and velocity she had after trying to badly sell that and throwing herself out of the ring after that, she could have seriously injured Bailey here. She could have given her a concussion. Then I would have been so pissed. I would have <laughs> lost my mind. Dana, I, lo- I love you, but come on. You suck. She's terrible. Your ring awareness is fucking it's garbage. Noelle Foley, who's based, barely a wrestler, can wrestle better than you. Her sell jobs are awful. Like, she can't sell at all. No, you, you gotta go back to development. You gotta learn how to sell. Because right now, you're you're almost killing people. Yeah, she's she's a detriment right now. She's yeah. a liability to hurting other women in the ring Seriously, right so that is the Dana Botch of the week. And I probably think there's probably going to be more of those if she wrestles. So What is uh, the Survivor Series team? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll move on to the last part of Raw, what we want to talk about is the match of the year candidate in the works. You mean Golden Truth versus Shining Stars? No. You can talk about that if you want. Well, <laughs> since you I'll don't want to leave that to your segment for you to talk about every week. I, think, I, I couldn't care less. I think this was a great segment. Why? What did this prove? <laughs> 
What does this do for anything about the show? This is not a ratings booster. This is the, the bathroom break. You know, you, you get out of your seat, you need to go get some nachos, or you get a soft drink, you get whatever you need to do before you come back and sit down. You have time to do it while these goofballs in the ring just fight each other for no fucking reason. Because there was a good backstory, you know? Oh, good backstory. Oh, yeah. yeah because right. yeah. Golden Truth or Goldust and R Truth are backstage and. Our truth is like, no, we were not on the team anymore. Goldust is like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I sold our spot on the Survivor Series team for a, a timeshare in Puerto Rico. <laughs> God. So then they end up having a match with the Shining Stars to win their spot back. And, and they, they still lose. lose. And the Shining Stars win. <laughs> Yeah, because they cheated. Oh, oh, wow. This is so good. I love this part of TV. So, Shining Stars is going to be on uh, on Team Raw for Survivor Great. Series. I'm so excited. They're probably the first ones they're going to lose. <laughs> So that was the the segment of the night right there. I know you wanted to get that out of the way. Oh, sure. All right, great. So into the match of the year candidate, the real one in the works. So Sami Zayn is backstage with Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon basically just bad mouthing the hell out of Stephanie McMahon or Zayn and saying that she doesn't know why Mick Foley put him in this situation where he has the one to accept Dolph Ziggler's open challenge for the IC title at Survivor Series. Yeah, she's like she doesn't like his ha- ha- the whole happy go lucky interact with the crowd. Yeah, fuck you, Steph. Thing. <laughs> And she says it's unfair. She thinks Rusev deserves that spot. And uh, puts Zayn in a match with Rusev. Oh, of course. And the winner will go on to Survivor Series to face Dolph Ziggler. I'm like, oh, well, Sami Zayn gets screwed again. I'm like, for sure, 100%. He's losing this match. It's over. Done. We got into the match. Really good match, by the way. Um, Rusev looks like he's slimming down a little bit. And his uh, agility in the ring looks like it's increasing. So, you know, good for him. I, I can appreciate that. The way the match ended, unreal. This Rusev's on top, on the top turnbuckle. You got a fucking top rope paluva kick from Sami Zayn, man. It's a good thing Rusev Jesus held on. Jesus Christ, he speaking could've... about agility and in-ring performance, my God, man, to get your foot that fucking high to hit him in the face? What about Rusev? He could have, like, fell out of the ring. He, like, yeah, had and he had the ring presence to hold on and push himself forward, and that's how Sami Zayn wins, so thank God. So now <laughs> it's Survivor Zane. Series. Guys, Sami Zayn versus Dolph Ziggler for the IC title. There's a lot winner of theories. Gets, the winner brings the title to their respective brands. There's a lot of theories going on with this. People are yeah. saying maybe if Zayn wins, he'll go over to SmackDown. SmackDown, like Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon will just claim their uh, claim their title for their own and say it's staying on our show. Interesting. Or uh, the other theory, Dolph Ziggler could win. Stephanie being so pissed that Sami Zayn fires him and then he goes over to SmackDown anyways. Or trade him for the Miz or something. Or trade, yeah, or trade him for the Miz. A lot of theories, like, but the match itself, my God, we're going to witness probably, me and you, we're going to Survivor Series, are going to witness a possible match of the year candidate. Like this match, I guarantee you the crowd's going to go nuts for this match. And they better, they better do a good job. I swear to God, WWE, if you fuck up this match. Don't give them like a five minute spot. I will be so pissed. Gonna, this match has match of the year candidate written all over They're going to give Goldberg and Lesnar more time, I guarantee yeah. it. But this is going to be a good match, 100. percent I hope so. This is, yeah. I feel like, given the, but I feel like this won. match shouldn't be at Survivor Series. They shouldn't do that because th- we know they're surrounding it around Goldberg and Bar- and Brock Lesnar and the Survivor Series matches. But they want to give us a good mid card match because you have the Survivor yeah. Series matches. I hope this is like in the middle of the card, and I know they've made Survivor Series longer now. It's the same length as SummerSlam and WrestleMania. Now it needs to be a good match for sure. 100 percent needs to be authentic. And not Bosch at all. Well, they're not having a U.S. title match, so this is the only mid card title. title. This yeah. is the only title match, period. On the on the. Oh yeah, card. that's true. Wow. This is the only title match. So the, it, this should get a lot of attention. I hope it gets enough time as well. Give it like is twenty minutes. You can put a good match. You can put a good match up in twenty minutes. Is the cruiserweight title being defended? Yes. No. Yes, it is. It's okay. Kalisto versus Brian Kendrick. Okay. Well, this is the major title being defended. Yeah. Pretty so, much. Yeah. I mean, you have all the Survivor Series matches, and you have the Goldberg match. This match, I be, hope is really good. Yeah. We're gonna witness that. I hope if it's good, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be tearing up, man. <laughs> but yeah, two guys finally that you know never got their shot are finally yeah. getting a, a big shot on a big pay per view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait for it. I honestly, I, I, I get my mind just goes nuts thinking about it. But like we said, I think they should have like Ziggler and Zayn like. In the ring next week at some yeah. point, maybe he might show. Maybe one will show up on the other brand. I think this is a perfect way to do it. Perfect way. But into the raw rating, my rating, as you've seen, if you've seen me on Twitter, follow me at Real Kyle Masters. Six point five out of ten. I gave raw this week. 
pretty interesting rating. Uh, it was an up and down for me. It took me a while. I had it going down to four, and I also had it at seven. So I gave it just an honest 6.5, solely based on the cruiserweights, the match of the year announcement, and Sami Zayn winning. And I guess I'll give it to, I don't know, the New Day comic relief on the longest segment ever. <laughs> well, my corporate rating of the week, 3 out of 10 for Raw. Wow! Raw was fucking miserable this week. Yeah. I almost fell asleep multiple times during this show. All the fucking the amount of promos they had during this show. It was like I was watching promo. Monday Night, Night Promo. Monday Night Promo. Hey. That should be Awful. every every go-home show should be called Monday this Night wasn't Promo even the go home and show. Smack I, Promo. I expect this from the go-home show. Next week's the go-home yeah. show. What was their Oh, yeah. It is this? not the go-home show. Damn. And it's wow. in Buffalo. We're not going to the Ron Buffalo, unfortunately. unfortunately. This will be the first time we're missing it in a long time. But Survivor Series, you know, more important than next yeah. take over Toronto. But, and dumbing down the crowd, I thought that was a complete slap in the face to that crowd yeah. and to the European fans. Yeah. So, 3 out of 10 for Raw. Okay. Interesting. So, got into the blue brand, SmackDown, SD Live, and yeah. again, roller coaster. It's up and down again. One thing I want to say right now for SmackDown, guys, I'm going to get heat for this. I don't know if the James Ellsworth fans feel the same way, but stop already. It's got to, he's got to go away for a bit and then come back and then not be anywhere near the main title picture. I heard he might be getting a contract soon. Wow. You know what? I can appreciate that. He's worked his whole life in the Indies, okay? I've, I've learned to respect him in he's that way. For like 15 years. But he's got to stay away from the main title picture. He's not a main event caliber wrestler. Look at him. No. No. He needs to stay away. We've had it, the, the last, we've had like the three week comic relief and him pinning AJ Styles, whatever, all that shit. He's got to stay away now. Now it's getting fucking stale. And I know a lot of people agree with me too. It's getting boring. He just needs to go away. You like, know what? I think you should go to the cruiserweight division. Yeah, or NXT. How about NXT? I'm sure the crowd actually will love him. I don't Maybe. know. Something. Maybe at some point he can turn on the crowd and become a heel. Yeah. He just, he needs to, you know. I, if he was a wrestler in the indies, why has we not seen any wrestling ability out of him yet? We've seen him get his ass kicked. Pretty much. I, I don't understand. But so, he, you know what? It's, it's getting boring now. It needs to stop. I'm, getting, I'm starting to get really cheesed over it. You were cheesed from the beginning. Yeah, but now I'm getting... I'm getting respectfully cheesed. So we'll get into SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And it started off with the Team Blue, the Blue brand being blue announced. Brand. The brand. Yeah. The men's team being announced, all of them coming out. We yeah. already had the full five members <laughs> announced. Yeah, so we get AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, Randy Wyatt, <laughs> Randy Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt, and Corbin. And Corbin. Well, so we thought. We'll, we'll get into that later. At the segment. <laughs> yeah. And then James Ellsworth comes out. Oh, yeah. And Great. I'm like, oh, Shane announces him as the team mascot. Mas- team mascot. Like, why? Why do they need a team mascot? <laughs> oh, my God. Is he going to come out holding the SmackDown flag at Survivor Series and lead the team? Like, going to be wearing all blue? Oh, God. He has his own Titantron in music now. God. I hope you don't <laughs> download that song. I'm not. Thank God. But I'm yeah, not. he's a team mascot. You know, whatever. I get, all I can say is whatever. Styles is like pissed throughout this whole yeah. segment. Why the hell is this guy even in here? Uh, Styles is so good. So Styles good, is man. Styles is the best wrestler in the company right now. Yeah. I'm going to say right and now. And he's got to d- dumb down to James Elworth level. And he's the champ that runs the camp. He's saying that he's yeah. the team captain, all this crap. Mm-hmm. And of course, Ambrose doesn't agree. And yeah. then Corbin ends up leaving. Just walks out. Like, okay, didn't even give us a reason why. He just walks away. Okay. Yeah. Being the lone wolf, right? And then they end up saying that there's going to be a six man tag later on. Yeah. Boda. Yeah. So, uh, oh, what was it about? It was Randy uh, Orton, Bray Wyatt, yeah, 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 yeah. and Styles yeah. versus Dean Ambrose, Corbin, and James Ellsworth. Whoa, great. So, and then they go backstage, and Corbin says, There's no way in hell I'm teaming with Ellsworth and Dean Ambrose. <laughs> So they're like, okay, you want to walk out? You're gonna have a match with Kalisto, the returning Kalisto. Oh, great! Wow, even better. Thank God. You know, let's take let's take Corbin. I want to make him face Kalisto. Yeah. Yeah. So he has a match with Kalisto. We'll, we'll just get into that. We'll, we'll yeah. skip all the way around it. So then Kalisto uh, and Corbin are supposed to have a match. 
The match doesn't even start because Corbin attacks Kalisto. Yeah. And then he throws him outside the ring. Oh, and then we have the worst injury spot of all. This is like worse than Eva Marie's bump that she Like, y- you, how do you not see? He and slips. And it's Corbin. Like, he, it's not like it's someone that's sloppy. Like, Corbin knows what he's doing in the ring. He's not going to do something like he that. He slips. His leg goes down in between the ring apron. And he hits his knee. And he's, like, saying his knee popped. Like, seriously? And then Kalisto, like, hits him into the steel, steel steps. Throws him back in the ring and does like a frog splash on his yeah. knee as in retaliation for the weeks and months of Corbin kicking his ass. Sure. So. And now Corbin's injured and he's taken out of the match. He's injured. He can't fight. Oh, great. Fantastic. I can't believe it. What a push that. for Baron Corbin. <sighs> Enough said. I can't even. I'm, just, I'm too angry. I'm too angry that it's frustrating to talk about it. Oh, I'm done talking about it. I know you love Baron Corbin a lot, but you... He, <laughs> I don't know. I think they are setting up for a big push for him, maybe against John Cena at Royal Rumble. That'd be great, um, hopefully. So, yeah, we had that atrocious segment. Yep. Getting into another atrocious segment, we had Naomi defeating Natalia. Oh, yeah. I guess that, well, that's the other few that, that's not really... I know that they're trying to get everyone like feuding on SmackDown, so everyone has a spot in the women's division, everyone's fighting, but... <laughs> But it, Natalia comes down to the ring and she's got her whistle because apparently she's the team coach for <laughs> Team SmackDown because she didn't team get on coach. the team. She's God. the coach for the women's team. Um, this is why SmackDown was just and we had Nikki Bella down. on commentary with her new black hair. I don't know oh, who she's great. trying to be now. Cool. And then halfway through the match, Carmella comes out and tries to attack Nikki Bella again. Natalia gets in the middle of it and is like, no, no, we're not fighting, we're not fighting. Well, at least she's trying to separate the conflict, which she's is smart. She's whistle like Titus O'Neil style and then gets God. back in the ring and gets a roll-up pin by Naomi. <sighs> I swear it was all over. Again, the booking this week is just all over the place. and It's just sloppy. It was poorly done and nothing exciting. Like, Survivor Series in two weeks. God, man. Like, it just sucked. It sucked. That's all I gotta say. It sucked. It sucked. Uh, next, we had the Vod villains in the ring, and out comes Brazongo. They're alive. Wait, who? They're Wait, alive. No way. They're... Stop it. It wasn't yep. the headbangers in disguise. This is actually Brazongo, the real Brazongo. Well, they were kind of wow. They were channeling their inner headbangers because they came out in uh, in kilts. Oh, great. And they're also wearing like an outfit. Apparently, they're calling themselves the Fashion Police now. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Because they're wearing, like, a whole police outfit. They're calling themselves the Fashion oh. Police. <laughs> well, at least we got to see them have a match. And, and they won! won! They won! Look at that! Yes. Hey, look at that! Yes. Hey, Good Brazongo. for Brazongo, my boys. Getting a win. Guess oh, about two man. heel teams facing each wow. other. Wow. Yeah, it makes sense. I guess so. Uh, I fucking hate the VOD villains, so that was great. But I'm happy <laughs> we finally get to see Brazongo on TV, and they're mm. one of the team. I think that was the qualifying match. Oh, it was. It was. I think yep. this was for the last yep. spot. So, yeah, Brazongo, thank God. Wow, Brazongo, get in the way on, of the you're, team. We're going to see Brazongo live. Yay! <laughs> Brazongo, finally getting a push, man. I love yeah. it. And then we get Daniel Bryan and Shane trying to fi- figure out their Survivor Series team with the Corbin injury backstage. Yeah. And Shane McMahon gives him a clipboard and is like, here, here's the entire SmackDown here's roster. the list. The SmackDown the li- list. The list. <laughs> The list of SmackDown. Drink it in, man. <laughs> really isn't oh nothing on God. the list. And Miz comes in with Maurice, and Miz won't even talk to Dan O'Brien anymore. He's getting Maurice to talk to yeah. him. He just won't even talk to him anymore. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> Saying that he should have been the final member and this and that. Whatever. Thanks, and then, Miz. Uh, awesome. Miz gets to fight uh, the Dolph Ziggler next week for the IC title, and if he beats Dolph Ziggler, he'll go on to face Sami Zayn, which we all know it's not going to happen. So. <laughs> Sorry, Miz. You, Miz. I'm sure they're going to keep Ziggler versus Zane. That's like match of the year right there. Next, we get... We're on to my blissed-off moment of the week here. Oh, here we go. We get the Becky Lynch and Alexa Bliss title match. So which the, was, mo- the moment the blissed-off moment of the week is the match itself. Ooh. No, no, it's the build-up that SmackDown was trying to say for this match. It's the main event in the middle of the fucking show. <laughs> They were like, oh, the women's match is going to be the main event. Like, at the start of SmackDown, I'm like, holy shit, SmackDown's going to get their first ever main event. Yeah. No. Nope. Women's match. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Main event in the middle of the fucking show. <laughs> Typical WWE booking right there. <laughs> Why do you call it a main event if it's in the middle of the show? That does not, that doesn't make sense of a main event. That's not a definition of a main event. Main event is the end of the show. <laughs> I just picture Vince laughing. <laughs> 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 women's match is the main event. Gotcha. <laughs> it's in the middle of the show. 
So that's my blissed up uh, over the week for you guys. Yeah. What about on, the, what about the ending of the match? On to the a, match. The match was a very good match. Yeah. Oh, it was good. And they actually had a commercial break during this match. Not like one of those quick commercial yeah. breaks. This was like a 10, 15 minute match. And it was really good. They were actually starting to show some of the moves that other moves that Bliss and Becky have. Mm. But the ending of the match. Is that blissed off? <laughs> ruined the entire fucking match for me. <laughs> Becky uh, puts Alexa the into the disarmor, yeah. okay? And the ref, like worse than the NFL refs right now, like <laughs> missing blown calls left and right. I don't know where he's positioned. But Alexa's foot is clearly. On the Literally, bottom rope. it was before the tap. It was on the Clearly rope. Clearly on the bottom rope, but this ref only sees the tap. Yeah. And so Alexa loses by tap out when her foot has clearly been on the rope for That's like going to be interesting seconds. because I guess Alexa on Talking Smack said that to Dale and Brian and, and called them out for the lack of not, not doing anything about it. So Exactly. I think, some, I think something's going to I think something's going to happen. I think she's going to get another I think she's going to get a rematch at TLC. I hope to God she does. I hope it's a TLC match. That'd be great. Or, uh, the no, first ever women's TLC match. Some kind match. of stipulation so that she doesn't get fucked over yeah, like that. Yeah, maybe it'll be a women's ladder match or a women's... Oh, I hope it's not a chair. I hate the chair match. Chair matches are boring. Uh, it's like when Big Show had one. It's like... Oh, God. I remember when it was TLC and stairs? <laughs> there was a stairs match? <laughs> God. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? It was a really good match. The ending sucked. Yeah. And Becky retains, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I'll agree with that. I, I think both of them put on a really good match. If they wanted to book it as the main event, just fucking book it as the main event. Or don't call it the main event in the middle of the show. Yeah, pretty That's much. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Next, we have mm. Kalisto will challenge for the Cruiserweight title at Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Uh, against Brian Kendrick. So that's going to be interesting. If uh, And then the, the, the stipulation with that is if, if Kalisto wins... That the SmackDown title or SmackDown Cruiserweight or the Cruiserweight title and the Cruiserweight division move over to SmackDown. Huge. And because of what the, the news part of the show today, I think it might happen that way. So we'll get into that when we talk about that. Yep. I like an, I like this other cross branded match. Mm-hmm. Interpromotional. And Kalisto should be in the Cruiserweight division regardless anyway. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He'd be a really good Cruiserweight. Look at that guy's got the ability and the ri- the ring skill to be an awesome it Cruiserweight. Just, it doesn't make sense for him to face Corbin. That's not where he's going to excel the most. Is facing a guy yeah. like Baron Corbin. Oh, I agree. He should be facing guys like Cedric Alexander and T.J. Perkins and that. Yeah. So next part of the show, fucking probably another terrible fucking part of the show. We had Kurt Hawkins against Apollo Cruz <sighs> in a quick like two minute match. And Kurt Hawkins wins by roll up. Not only Apollo that, Cruz. it was a two minute match. He beat Apollo. So you got Apollo Cruz going just lower and lower each week, and now he's getting losing to hashtag Kurt save Apollo Cruz, guys. My, well, Lord. I don't understand why. Do, what doesn't WWE see in this guy? Like I understand I his. He doesn't have the mic skills he needs yet. To be the traded. raw mic skills, but they're not giving him any time to show that though. I think they're he not might, giving. Him I think he might need to go to Raw. Time. Maybe. There's like, I understand that they might want to push Corbin first as the first new guy, but Apollo Crews should be doing more mm. than losing to Kurt Hawkins. I think this is coming down to Vince doesn't like the indie guys coming in, and he, he likes the homegrown guys more, so he's going to push the homegrown guys way more than the indie guys, so I think that has something to do with it, and it's terrible. It's stupid. Ugh. And then we had the, the main event, which was never regarded as the main event throughout the whole show. It was supposed to be Becky and Alexa, but I'm not going to go there anymore. We had the replacement for Corbin announced, and it was none other than it's gotta be Kane oh, God. in the six man tag match. So of we course, get- Kane. Fucking right. Another person that should be kept on TV. <laughs> nope. Get off TV, Kane. Stay away. Why is Kane being caught? I can't do this anymore. I can't talk about Kane. I fucking. Actually, needs to go. I don't think it was Styles, and I think it was Bray Harper and Orton. I think Styles was on commentary. I think. I'm trying to remember, but I think that's what it was. <sighs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really watch this part of SmackDown. <laughs> and they faced Ambrose, Kane, and Ellsworth, and it was okay match. There's not much you can do with Kane and no. James fucking Ellsworth in the match. Both have zero ring skills to what we see. <laughs> and I mean, Ambrose does what he can to carry the match, but there's only so much he can do facing three guys. I know you have fucking Kane in this, and you have Apollo Crews losing to Kurt Hawkins. Why is it not why? Apollo Crews in this? Why, why couldn't Apollo Crews be in this match? <laughs> why is it Kane? Why? Kane could have lost to Kurt Hawkins in a roll-up, and I wouldn't have given oh a fuck. Oh, my God. That's so bad. So, then, yeah, exactly. Taking time away from the new guys, so you put Kane in there. Makes sense. That makes sense. That's what SmackDown's about. <laughs> 
giving his time to fucking Kane, the 80 year old fucking fiery giant needs to get his ass out of here. I love corporate Kane, but not this Kane anymore, man. It's not in 2016. I don't like Kane anymore. God. And so the ending of the match was Bray Wyatt giving uh, sister Abigail to fucking James Ellsworth. Great. <laughs> wow. What an ending. Smackdown was so good this week. And Ellsworth looked oh, like man. he was completely like out cold. <laughs> Because everyone got in the ring after, and they were all about to attack Ambrose, because uh, Styles and the Wyatts came mm-hmm. in, and a uh, Randy Wyatt got yeah. in the ring, and they were about to attack Ambrose, and then Shane comes out and like tries to push him all the way, and so like, hey, you know, break it up, and then Daniel Bryan comes out, and he's like, I finally found a replacement looking on this list. I see in the top right corner it says my name, but unfortunately I can't wrestle anymore. But in the top left corner it says Shane McMahon. Man. So I'm announcing Shane McMahon God. as the fifth member of Team SmackDown. Yeah, again, I, I'm, on, I'm on the fence about it. I mean, I'm, I'm loving Shane O'Mac though. Like, mm-hmm. I would, I'm, I want to see him in a match. Finally, like bias, bias pick. I want to see Shane O'Mac wrestle live once. I know we'll get to see Corbett. Excuse me. Eventually, Corbin has a bright future in the WWE. But I, so. I can see where the people are saying, why is Corbin not in the match? Why did they have to replace him? What was the big deal about having him in the ma- not having him in the match? Yeah. Um, so I don't understand what the point of that was. But... Hmm. Uh, I, I, know, I, I know your thoughts on it, but they're up and down. I'm, on, I'm still on the fence that, yeah, I get to see Shane for the first time. And then I'm like, eh, they could have kept Corbin, they could have replaced with Apollo Cruz, but whatever. It is what it is now. We'll have to see what happens next week. Um, I'm hearing there's like this supposed to be this like State of the Union thing on after Raw on Monday. <laughs> oh yeah, where like oh, both yeah. general managers and commissioners are supposed to like yeah make a debate um, with each other. Yeah, Daniel Bryan and Shane accepted. Uh, yeah. Steph's and Mick's request to come to Raw, so we'll see what happens with that. That's not even going to be on Raw. It's after Raw, and it's going to be on the network. Oh, I'm like, oh, ooh, ooh. wow. But give my SmackDown rating. I gave it a five point five out of out of ten because just because it was less exciting than Raw this week. That's simple reason. I I disagree with you. I like SmackDown better. Ooh. Uh, SmackDown gets a six for me. A six? A six. Wow. Uh, Becky and Alexa was a great match. Just well, not having it as the main, like, advertising it as the main event and having it in the middle of the show made no sense. <laughs> um, yeah, Zongo being on TV and winning and qualifying for the match. Yeah. And uh, Shane O'Mac being announced as the last member. Okay. I'll give SmackDown the win this week. I see, I see. I feel you, bro. I feel you, dog. I'm biased because I'm a SmackDown dog. guy. I like SmackDown better, yeah. but... Well, I do, too. I, I, Raw's been pissing me off the last couple of weeks. Raw is complete hot. I want to like it, show. but I just, it just doesn't happen. If Sasha Banks was not on Raw, I do not even think I would watch this show. God. For the sake of the podcast, I'm watching this show. God. All right. Well, getting to the last part of the show, which we didn't have a couple weeks ago, but it's returned. WWE Headlines. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, guys, the part of the show where we have our headline news, any important news in the WWE. We like to talk and discuss it with you guys. So we have five topics this week. Five. Five time. Five time. Six time, technically, with King Booker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, first part of the news, Cruiserweight's moving to a new show. It's officially announced that the show 205 Live will be solely based on the cruiserweights. So anyone that's weighing 205 pounds or less will be on this show, and it'll be one-hour show after SmackDown. So Smack- technically, SmackDown is now from 8 to 11, just like Raw. So three hours, and the last hour will be 205 Live. On the network. On the uh, network. USA network. Yep. Uh, it's debuting November 29th, so at the end of this month. And Talking Smack is now being moved to 11 p.m. Interesting. So it's the same length as Raw, essentially. Yeah, basically. So, but Talking Smack is from eleven to twelve. <laughs> is but Talking ta- Smack an hour, or is it like half, half hour? hour? So well, eleven to eleven thirty. Talk is, for, is oh, from okay. eleven to eleven thirty two. Okay. So, but this is fantastic. So, like, Cruiserweight's gonna have their own show. That's why everyone's saying the rumors about how the Cruiserweight division's coming over to SmackDown. They think Kalisto's gonna win this match. Yeah. So if Kalisto wins, 
in a way, he's going. He's going to bring the cruiserweight title of SmackDown. It's just going to be brought to the last hour, which is going to be called Two Hundred Five Live. There's nothing being said yet whether it's going to be filmed, like if it's going to be at uh, in Florida or if it's going to be on at SmackDown and it's going to be, you know shown right after the show is done. Like they're going to tell fans to stay in their seats for Two Hundred Five Live. You want to watch? If not, leave. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. I would um, definitely stay for that. I would too because Smack the cruiserweights are unreal. <laughs> we've seen what they can. I mean, so far we've seen what they can do. Like not, not not fully, but it's gonna be it's gonna be literally it's gonna be like a one hour show of the. That's what they need. The cruiserweight tournament. Because like I was saying on the raw raw review here, they they're not utilizing the cruiserweight division. Raw is not appreciating appreciating the cruiserweight division and not utilizing them to yeah. the best of their ability. They're getting five I, yeah. minute spots on TV. Hundred percent. Now they're gonna get an hour. So I think. A lot. I've seen a lot of people flacking on this hard on Twitter, saying like it's going to be a bust. It's eventually going to go away. I don't think I so. Not. I actually I, don't think so. I think this is going to get a lot of ratings. You think the raw generic garbage they're doing now with the cruiser? They're, they're basically yeah. like WWE izing the cruiserweight division. Yeah. They're not letting them do the spots. It's going to be sick. Like it's its own classic. show. It's not SmackDown. It's not Raw. It's its own thing. Two hundred five live. It, the, the commentators are going to be Mauro Ronaldo and Corey Graves. Yeah, Unreal pairing right there. For some reason, there. we had Tom Phillips announced as a fourth commentator for SmackDown this week. There's rumors that maybe they're grooming him to take over for SmackDown to move Mauro to Raw yeah, to phase Cole we'll, out, which, yeah. I mean, I'd be happy with. But yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm really excited for this. I'm yeah beyond pumped. I can't, I'm going to be watching this. Like, I thought, uh, you know, watching SmackDown Tuesday was short, and I'm like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I can still do some stuff. Now I'm going to okay, no, I have uh, my next hour booked. I'm watching 205. That's gonna be cool. I mean, we're, are we gonna, gonna do two hundred five reviews? Like, what are we gonna do for this show? What's it mean know. for Lowdown? <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. But they're finally gonna be able to get some time to actually, you know, story tell these matches and actually get yeah. some promo time and mm-hmm. you know, actually have fifteen minute matches like they would have the cruiserweight classic. Yeah, interesting. But I, I'm a hundred percent behind this. The cruiserweights need. To do something else because what Raw's doing, they're not utilizing them. Yeah. To what so they again, Two Hundred Five Live is an hour after SmackDown starting November 29th. So you get a SmackDown into our next headline: Edge and Undertaker returning to SmackDown next week for the 900th episode of SmackDown. Wow! So Edge coming back and hosting the Cutting Edge show, and I think his guest, if I'm not mistaken, is AJ Styles. I believe. Mm. So that's going to be interesting. Um, and then The Undertaker will be, I guarantee you Miz crashes that <laughs> and tries to make it Miz TV. Yep. Anyways, Undertaker returning. I haven't said anything. I haven't read anything about what Undertaker is supposed to do. The only thing I've read is people talking about that it's probably going to be setting up his WrestleMania match next year and the rumors of it being John Cena since that was supposed to happen last year and it didn't because Cena got injured. Um, so I think this is the perfect time to build that. If this is going to be Undertaker's last match, and he's going to face John Cena. It's got to be right now. You've got to start the build right now, leading up to WrestleMania. Yeah, I agree. That's a match that needs that needs some hype behind it, mm-hmm. and the, not just like the week before announcing yeah. the match. You know, so nine hundred episodes. That means two years. We're going to hit the episode one thousand for SmackDown. Hopefully, it'll be like Raw one thousand. Mm-hmm. That'll be that's going to be a really good show. So. Um, Looking forward to that. Move on. Next bit of news. Jericho and Sinkar fight backstage again. I guess it was overseas. There's another dispute between these guys. So Sinkar is just, man, what the hell are you doing, man? Got it. It's Unikara. Yeah. <laughs> but he's got he's getting into fights with people. I know what happened. So Jer- they were on the bus, tour, uh, the, the bus, you know, going yeah. to the airport. And apparently, like, it wasn't just Sinkar. A couple other guys were making, like, stupid noises yeah. on the bus. And eventually, like, people were telling him to stop and... Most of everyone stopped except for Sin Cara kept making these like weird noises and Jericho like stood up and said like shut up and then Sin Cara stood up and said no fuck you and wow. they kinda like went at it and hmm. so apparently they kicked, didn't they kick Sin Cara off the bus. Sin <laughs> off this they kicked him off the bus <laughs> and then like exiled him from the the whole tour. He's not even touring with the raw guys uh, right now. He's on with with the SmackDown guys touring. <laughs> For the rest of this European tour. God, what an idiot, man. He's got a... I think they actually... I think I read a report that they actually have him attending anger management. Wow. Well, yeah. It's like the third or second time this has happened, man. But you know what, Sinkar? You know what you just made? You just made the list! <laughs> Which a tweet that uh, a lot of people liked. Yeah. It was a good one. Um, next bit of news. Billy Corgan and some TNA news. 
Billy Corgan is no longer involved with TNA. As Ashley announced today, the legal dispute has been settled. So the money he's been owed, it's been settled. He said he's going to release more information about it in the coming days. So that's so, it. The Billy Corgan era with TNA is done. So is Wrapped uh, up. Is he putting the final... No, no, he there? climbed out of the coffin. Oh, okay. <laughs> he has still like an ankle in there. He, he got himself out. Now run, man! Just run! <laughs> Book it! Uh, a lot of people were looking forward to him taking over because he, yeah, he actually would have had a decent direction with the company. No, but, but I guess he did. He saw how much how fucked up, and he's like, "Nah, I'm out of here, man." <laughs> it's uh, yeah. There's no saving that. Yep. And the last bit of news: some roadblock matches have been advertised, not not actually in in stone yet, but advertised. They are advertising Owens versus Reigns for the Universal Championship, God. or maybe this could be a possible title for title. Who knows? I don't know, that guy could be interesting. Uh, and they're also advertising Seth Rollins versus Jericho as being possibly rumored as a street fight because they are being booked in a street fight against each other, all live events for December. So, interesting. That's, uh, so what's Owens going to do? Oh, well, I guess he's going to have the match with Reigns. But... Yeah. Hmm. Are they going to split up? Hmm. Well, we'll have to see. After this week's raw ending, that was kind of funny. So we'll yeah. see what happens. It, it's almost, it's, it's not really teasing. It's just, it's almost getting there. I, it, it's going to eventually happen. We, everyone knows it'll eventually happen. And I'm not looking forward to the go home show. Cause it's, it's usually just promo central, mm-hmm. but I mean, this week was promo central. So mm-hmm. I don't know what they're going to do next week. Yeah. It's in Buffalo. I don't know where SmackDown is, but oh, SmackDown. Oh, I read it. Okay. I know that the following week is in, uh, Ottawa. And then the week after, or the week before, oh, I don't remember. I can't tell you. It's probably somewhere in New York somewhere, yeah, uh, or Columbus, whatever. It's a shame it's going to end our Ron Buffalo streak, yeah. but ah. Survivor Series. That's we'll all right. There. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for week number 31 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. And Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week. Also during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment hosted by Corporate Cappy, the Luke Gallows polls, and WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you'd like to join in on the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at NoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed self-proclaimed greatest host the glorious kyle masters and every week i'm continue to be joined by my co-host mr corporate himself the blissful boss corporate cappy <laughs> and as always we are here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown